to Logic Monitor's Logic Talks, a conversation with industry experts and really innovative customers of Logic Monitor, deep diving into the topics and technologies that make IT so crucial to the modern business world. Thanks for joining me. My name is Mark Banfield. I'm Chief Revenue Officer here at Logic Monitor. We have a really exciting conversation for you today. I'm joined by Justin K. Wood, who is Operations Director of International Managed Services at Logicalis. Logicalis, a global managed service provider. In his 20 years of tenure with Logicalis, Justin has been instrumental in architecting and implementing a variety of key systems, processes, and operational frameworks. His efforts in structuring Logicalis's digital service platform has resulted in true consistency in the way that service management is delivered to customers across the globe, allowing for improved operational efficiency, scalability, and quality throughout the entire portfolio globally. Thank you for joining us, Justin, and welcome to Logic Talks. Hi, Mark, thanks, great to be here. Great, so let's dive straight in. With such a wide breadth of customers, each having their own unique infrastructure, different use cases, different needs, what were some of the major hurdles you faced in monitoring your customers' infrastructure? And how did switching to Logic Monitor help solve those pain points? One of the main challenges we face uh, or have faced historically um, is the ability to um, do dependency mapping because typically for an MSP, you're not managing the entire environment. So you have a subset of the customer's environment that gets... Uh, contracted you for management. So that first step of using Logic Monitor to discover and show the customer what they have is crucial. And what we've built is a tight integration between Logic Monitor and our service management so that we can bring that discovered data into our system, have a conversation with the customer. And then once they contract with us, we significantly speed up the onboarding because the data is already in our CMDB and we just flag which uh, CIs and devices they want managed, um, and then we move forward into the next stage without a lengthy process of gathering data through spreadsheets. Um, and then, in terms of you know um, topology and uh, root cause, um, we again you had to discover the entire environment for the system to be able to do those kind of things um, with Logic Monitor, and, I, and I'll get into a bit more of this later, but. Logic Monitor facilitates us to do uh, machine learning and, and clustering, which solves a lot of those problems. So a combination of using the topology that's built into Logic Monitor and then using um, the data that is fed into our data lake and turning on machine learning, the combination of those things um, enables us to do root cause and clustering, uh, which is huge uh, when you're dealing with the types of volumes that we're dealing with. So Justin, regarding the volume of devices that you're using Logic Monitor to manage, could you talk about that? But also, in terms of onboarding new customers, um, specifically, how much more efficient is that for you? Yeah, sure. Mark, the scale's pretty big. I mean, we are currently contracted um, for 20,000 devices, and we're growing into that rapidly um, at a few thousand a week. Um, so we're, we're going to use up the capacity fast and then we're going to, you know, when we bring on other regions, we'll probably be in the 35 to 40,000 range, um, pretty quickly. Um, so the scale is pretty high and, and that's why, you know, to the conversation around onboarding, you know, with that kind of scale of devices, the fast onboarding and the ability to do discovery and the integration between our service management and logic monitor is crucial. You know, even after we've discovered a device, we can turn on the monitoring from our CMDB from the customer record without having to go back and forth between tools. So that ability that logic monitor has given us access to do that is huge. Um, and then the discovery, you know, the fast discovery for onboarding is also significant. Um, you know, tasks that would take us a few weeks to do in the past can be done you know, within minutes. So, so Justin, tool sprawl can easily overwhelm support teams, especially when an incident occurs. How important was it for you to be able to consolidate monitoring tools into a single platform and a single pane of glass? Yeah, no, it's, it's true, Mark. Um, and, and to exasperate tool sprawl, uh, we have um, multiple regions. So Logicalis operates in 26 countries 
And in many of those countries, there was independent tool use. And with Logic Monitor, we were able to um, consolidate all of that globally, um, which is, you know, not just preventing tool sprawl and, uh, you know, cost redundancies and things like that, um, but we're now able to operate in a consolidated fashion. So our integrations that we build and all the developments that we do um, are now leveraged globally because we start with that common monitoring tool. So everybody's running on the same instance of Logic Monitor, uh, sharing learnings, uh, sharing standards. Um, so the, 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 the benefit that we're getting from a consolidated effort on one tool is huge not to mention the savings in infrastructure. So we talked a lot about benefits, specifically around operational benefits. What are some of the things you've seen for your internal teams, as well as for your customers? The, the reporting is fantastic. The dashboarding, we extend that to our customers through our portals. Um, so everything we're seeing, all the analytics and history and trending that we see, um, the customers can see as well. So yeah, the, the user experience is, is, is a significant step up. Great. So we've been going for a tough period with the coronavirus. How is Logicalis helping its customers um, transition to remote working? From day one, uh, we internally, we transitioned everybody to work from home and we have huge operation centers all over the world. So that was a, a very significant effort that we were able to achieve very quickly. Um, and part of that is because we use SaaS tools and everybody has remote access. Um, so internally, it was a very quick. In fact, most places we did that within one week. Um, then we, at the same time, built new propositions for our customers, focused on work from home capabilities, remote access, security, all that kind of uh, stuff. And um, it's actually been significant. Uh, I hate to say this, but we're actually doing quite well um, because of the demand on our technology. Yeah, that's awesome. And and you know, and, and you're very right that. Um, the managed service market is undergoing significant change, um, driven, driven twofold. One, by the fact that there is now these modern technologies that allow you to change the way that you service customers, but also the demands of your customers are changing. Uh, mm -hmm. The expectations are changing. You know, we live in an era where expectations are, for, from every part of our life, is that technology just works all the time, every time, without any downtime. Um, talk to us a little bit about how you see managed services changing in the coming years, um, because it's a very dynamic space, it's a very fast growing space, uh, and you're right at the forefront of it with what you're doing with AIOps. How do you see the market changing in the next three to five years? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, Mark, I think um, more and more, uh, whether it be managed services or anything else in technology, I think we're going to see a trend to outcome-based uh, solutions, right? So I think customers are going to expect the same from us as an MSP, um, and more and more they're going to contract a business outcome. Um, so you know, in the past, you used to see um, server. You would negotiate with a customer to say, "I will manage your server, and when something breaks, I'll fix it in X time." Now we're saying, "Give me a virtual machine in a cloud. I don't care about the server. I don't care about the CPU in there." Just give me an outcome, which is that server needs to run and perform at a certain speed uh, and deliver the result I need. Now you're seeing SaaS on top of that saying, give me an application that does X um, to give me an outcome. So I think with managed services, we're going to see more and more of that. You know, I don't want to know about all the server and the SLAs, just commit to give me an outcome. So I think we're going to see more of that keep my business running thinking and, and spare me the complexity of all the details. I don't want to know about the details. Just commit to give me that outcome. You touched upon cloud there, um, which is obviously we're in a period of massive cloud transformation. Um, how is Logicalis seeing that transformation with your customers? Um, how much now of what you do starts in cloud versus on-prem? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Mark. I mean, we're seeing a massive migration to the cloud. Um, there was hesitation a few years ago. As you know, there were all kinds of barriers um, to security and people were nervous about it and they were only putting their non-prod stuff into the cloud. Now we're seeing the opposite. Uh, people that were hesitant in the past um, have broken that barrier 
And it's now a case of um, not if I want to get there, but can you help me get there? Um, because I have some complexities. You know, the logic monitor stuff we're doing um, is makes that transparent. It doesn't matter where the customer is on prem or in the cloud, um, whether it be in Azure, in um, you know AWS, wherever they are, it makes no difference, right? No matter where they are or which cloud they are, or which country they're in. Can you talk a little bit about twofold? One is from a technology perspective, how a SaaS platform that's multi-tenanted helps you deliver managed services. And secondly, from a commercial standpoint, how we're working with you from a partnership standpoint to make sure that we can you know, support you as an MSP as opposed to an end user IT organization. Yeah, sure. Um, so firstly, the multi-tenant MSP aspect is critical to us. You know, the ability to have a single instance that we manage globally, but allow each country or region to have a space in there um, to carve it up as many ways as you want is absolutely critical. So we get the benefit of um, sharing all of our data source work and development, but still being able to have independent views. So admins in one country can just view their customers. So it's, it's huge. Um, the second part of the question there, Mark, the, the partnership, not only has it been great technology, but you guys have proven to be a really, really great partner. Um, and I know it's going to sound like I was almost paid to say that because I'm probably quite passionate about this, but seriously, the, the, the relief when we had questions or needed help, um, even now with the AI ops stuff, we're ingesting huge volumes of data into a data lake. Um, and we're working with you guys on you know, ways that we can make that more efficient. And there's never been a question of, I'm sorry, that's the way it works. You know, go read the document or anything like that. It's always been a case of, hey, we hear you, we'll work with you and let's figure this out. And it's been amazing just to see the level of partnership that you guys have brought to the table. It really feels like a, a partnership as opposed to a vendor um, relationship. Good stuff. Well, we enjoyed the partnership too. Um, and it's been a very fruitful one. And continues to be so um well thank you justin for the time taken thanks for your candid uh, feedback and thoughts on not only logic monitor but the msp market in general um and if you would like to learn more about justin's journey or tip anything about Lo Lo logic monitor please visit our website www.logicmonitor.com